My name is Sophie Wake. I'm a painter, but I was an illustrator for about 20 years. That's what I did at college. I worked for um, a lot of uh, magazines, so I would work for The Guardian. I sometimes used to do the front of the money page, which was quite a big illustration, and that would be done overnight. And I really loved it. I really loved it. And I worked really hard, and I worked deep into the night many days of the week and then I had a small child and I basically overworked myself and um, couldn't really do it anymore. <laughs> After I um, conked out really with exhaustion, late nights and a, and a young child was a lot for me to deal with but it was kind of the best thing that could ever happen because I went back to factory settings and although I went back to illustration for a bit afterwards um, I could feel that my heart wasn't in it anymore you know that real love that spark had gone and I was sort of illustrating from almost from the end from my hand you know the heart had gone and the the depths and the feeling and there was often many compromises to be made when illustrating so I sort of ground to a halt and it was around this time that I discovered meditating, which kind of got me out of my difficult place that I'd, that I'd got into with overworking. So meditation really saved my life. My little boy, I can't remember how old he was, but he was quite young, and I bought him just a little canvas from Tiger. And he just did this really quick painting on it. And I just thought, oh my God, that's what you do. You just do it. You don't have to think about it, you just do it. And that opened up some floodgates, so I started painting and not worrying about it. I didn't feel self-conscious about it because I was painting from the heart, so it didn't matter what was coming out. It felt like it was really my expression of my experience, my pain, my experience. I definitely have a ritual uh, with creating my art. Um, obviously now the tea ceremony has become a big part of my creative ritual. And I don't think I could create without stilling myself. So <clears throat> the rhythms of meditation and painting and appreciation of beauty, a sense of awe, a sense of um, inspiration definitely comes from coming into presence and, and a sense of being and obviously you know that's the ultimate goal to be in presence in a continual state of presence I think that's what we all would would love you know because we know in that in that space that placeless place of um, of being we are there is freedom you know it's a vibrant ground of being and it is full of rich creativity, seams of different creativity in that place. So to me going into into stillness, that's kind of where I might maybe access some pain or a sense of discomfort. And then I like to be able to paint that. So 
you know, with the with the statues and the fountains, that's definitely come from knowing that it's really painful to be in a mind state that's locked and unable to see beyond that. But I also know that being in a state of freedom and in a in flow, I can be free from that that discomfort. And that's a very beautiful place to be and you know it's it's a really creative place. pictures of the angels and the fountains, or the statues and the fountains, is called Statues and the Fountain in the Heavenly Garden. And they're in a heavenly garden because really we are in this heavenly place, but we can't often see it because we're so often crowded with thinking and our habitual minds take us away into prolific ridiculous thinking. So this series about the angels in the fountain in the heavenly garden is about being trapped really. They're stuck in this state where they can't see beyond their thinking mind, their cycle that's just going round and round, proliferating mind just churning out this stuff and this monkey going on. Often we can't see beyond that and it causes a lot of human suffering and a lot of human pain and a lot of us are stuck in this state. So these pictures of the statues next to the fountain, the statue represents the state we're stuck in and the fountain represents flow, freedom, it represents movement and the only other constant of a fountain is change. These paintings are really about um, that pain between being in a human state, stuck in a mind state, and the beauty that's there, that sometimes we get a glimpse of, and we know it's there. Coming into presence is a fertile ground of being which gives birth to creativity. My series of moon dancer paintings came about when I was very deep in my practice, my meditation practice, and also I had this real sense of liberation, or wanting to self-liberate, wanting to self-liberate. And they came from the idea of basically stripping yourself naked and liberating yourself free of any self-conscious ideas, thoughts. These women are dancing under the light of the moon, the full moon. They are throwing off the shackles of any kind of ridiculous human self-criticism, self-hatred, self-loathing. They're loving their bodies. They are, they're just free. They're free, and they're loving themselves, and they're liberating themselves. I think a lot of my work tends to come from a somatic experience in my body, and then I bring it out onto the canvas or the paper. So that's really the process, and I think imagination comes into that and it's very intuitive and quite and very spontaneous I can paint a painting in maybe half an hour you know some are longer the quicker paintings I find are, are full of more freedom and they usually work better because they've got a spirit in them that I like that I've captured that resonates with the feeling in the body so so it's a kind of somatic expression They were kind of questioning who is it that sees, who is it that looks, you know, who is it that's looking out of those eyes. Whether you're, um, you know, a furry dog or a, a big blue baboon or something, it doesn't matter. That's your physical expression. But what I'm interested in is what's looking through those eyes. What is it that sees that consciousness? 
that awareness without the personality. The personality can change, can ebb and flow, depending on our mood and our state. But it's that awareness, that being that's looking through, and that's what, as we look at each other, we relate to. We recognise it in each other. We recognise that truth. And I think that's where love comes in. Um, I've been working at home. I've always, I've always worked at home. And I had a studio downstairs in the front room. And in fact, I've actually had a studio in pretty much every room of this house. So we had an attic upstairs, which is now this room, and it's always been full of mess. It's been like a, a series of um, antiques roadshow or something up here. It's been full of stuff. We've cleared the room, and now it's made this amazing space. And it's changed a lot. I feel much more at ease. I've lived in Brighton for about 38 years now. I used to live in London and then I moved as a child to, to Brighton. My father always wanted to live in Brighton. He went to college at the university here, which was um, Polytechnic then, I think. And my grandfather was actually head of furniture making at Brighton as well in the 60s and 70s. So we had that attachment to Brighton. And I've always loved it. I love Brighton so much. I don't seem to have been able to move away from it. So I'm very grateful to Brighton for my teenage years and my naughty 20s and my fun 30s, my meditative 40s, um, and then now into my 50s where probably the happiest I've ever been.